Yo, what's good, everyone? Before I start, I just want to give a huge shout out and a big thanks to all of you who watched, liked, and commented on my previous A6000 video. I just started YouTube not too long ago, and that video has been my most viewed one to date. So thanks again to all of you. Let's keep that momentum going and jump right into this review video about the Sony 16 to 50 kit lens. So this is the kit lens that came with the Sony a6000 along with most of their other APS-C cameras. It has a stigma of producing pretty bad images. So I wanted to use it, test it out for myself and show you guys some example images so you can see just what this lens is capable of. I'm going to go into detail about the build and image quality, including sharpness, colors, sun stars, and more. And of course, I'm going to have a ton of sample images throughout this video. So watch until the end and you can judge for yourself. So let's get started first with the build quality. The Sony 16 to 50 millimeters is an extremely compact lens weighing in at only 4.1 ounces and a little over an inch long in its retracted form. Even though it extends when it's powered on, I would still consider this a pancake lens because this is nowhere near the size and weight of a traditional zoom lens. Check out how tiny this lens cap is. That's because the actual glass portion of this lens is pretty small. Most of the housing is taken up by the optical stabilization and power zoom motors. The barrel of this lens is made out of a plastic construction and the rear mount is metal, which is nice to see. However, it's not weather sealed, which is expected in this level of kit lens. The overall design is pretty simple with a dual function zoom and focus ring on the front and a power zoom slider on the left hand side. This slider allows you to zoom in and out and it's a pretty unique feature that I'm going to go into more detail later on in this video. Now let's jump into the image quality starting with the distortion and vignette tests. This is a brick wall shot at 16 millimeters, and you can see some pretty bad pincushion distortion. Just look at how curved some of those lines are. Also keep in mind that this camera already corrects the worst of the distortion, even if you shoot raw. Due to the software correction, I noticed some reverse vignetting where the corners are actually lighter than the center. This is super weird and I really don't like how the camera automatically adjusts the photos, even in raw. I'd much rather get the original photos and I can correct it in post myself. However, it's not as noticeable in day-to-day -day shooting. Zooming into 50 millimeters, things look a lot better. The wall looks pretty straight with minimal distortion and vignetting. I'm pretty happy with the performance at 50 millimeters because this is where I'll be taking those detail shots as well as some portraits and distortion would really detract from those kinds of images. Here are a few other examples taken at 50 millimeters. Now let's check out some of these sharpness tests. Here are some center crops that I took comparing different f-stops at 16 millimeters. For the size, I'm very surprised at how sharp this lens is, even wide open at f3.5. You can see that sharpness improves when stopped down to f8 and gets a bit soft at f13 due to diffraction. Now let's check out the corner performance. These images show the top left crop at 16 millimeters, and you can see it's pretty soft at f3.5. There's also a bit of smear, so the details get lost. But honestly, it's not that bad at all. I expected much worse given the size of the optics in this lens as well as its general bad reputation. Stopping down to f8 and f13 does help improve the corners, but they never get significantly sharp. Here is another example shot at 16 millimeters, and you can still see plenty of detail in the corners. So this lens is more than capable of shooting at 16 millimeters for everyday shots, but I would not recommend this if this is your only landscape lens where corner performance would be important. Now let's move on to the center crops at 30 millimeters. You can see that it is already sharp at f3.5 and does get a bit sharper stop down. Corner performance is also great, so I really have no complaints. When you zoom in all the way to 50 millimeters, you can see that center sharpness is exceptional. It is definitely the strongest end of the zoom range for this lens. Corner performance also holds up at 50 millimeters. Even wide open, you can see plenty of detail in the brick. So optically, this lens pretty much surpasses all of my expectations. Especially since the 16 to 50 is such a mass produced kit lens, there's going to be plenty of sample variation from lens to lens. So I'm curious, let me know in the comments below. If you own this lens, let me know if yours performs similarly or not. 
now let's move on to color and contrast. In my experience, certain cheap lenses can have a green or purple color cast over the image, and I'm happy to report that I didn't experience that with this lens at all. The colors look natural and vibrant out of the camera, and with some slight photo editing, they can really pop. Check out the colors in this awesome graffiti wall art. Here's another example where the yellows really stand out. This is an example of a street shot where the red is really vibrant and not muddy at all. And in this last shot, you can even pick out all the individual colors and tones with no strange color casts. So as you saw in those photos, there's also plenty of contrast. However, this lens does not do well against flare. As you can see, there are these nasty green and purple flares that distract from the image and decrease contrast. A lens hood would definitely help with this, or even just blocking out the sun with your hand can reduce some of this flaring. Speaking of the sun, it is possible to get sun stars with this lens. They are visible at f16, but not very symmetrical. The sun stars become much more defined at f20 and on, but I really would not recommend shooting at this high of an f-stop. The asymmetrical nature of these sun stars are also a bit distracting, but that's just up to your own personal taste. In this next section, we're going to talk about the zoom range and just how practical it is in the field. 16 to 50 millimeters roughly gives you a 24 to 75 millimeter full frame equivalent, and this is perfect for everyday walk around shots. At 16 millimeters, you can take pretty wide photos, so it's great for landscapes and cityscapes where you want to capture a lot of it in one image. Once you zoom to 50 millimeters, it gives you that extra bit of reach to get some of those detailed shots and really frame your subject tightly. These concepts also apply to video where you can take nice, wide, establishing shots at 16 millimeters and then zoom into 50 to really tell a more directed story. The physical controls on this lens are also very responsive and pretty intuitive to use. I was pretty hesitant about the power zoom feature at first because I thought it would be too slow to zoom in and capture the moment. But I realized that if you use the zoom ring in the front of the lens, you can snap it quickly into place and take the shot. So now this question is, is this lens worth it? And would I buy it at MSRP for $300? And the answer is no, I would not. But generally speaking, most people who have this lens only have it because it came with the camera as a kit. And in that case, they're not spending $300 to go out and buy this lens individually. And oftentimes, this may be the only lens that they'll be shooting with for a while. So if you're one of those people who are considering on whether or not to keep or purchase this lens as part of a kit, then I would say, yeah, go for it because it's a solid lens for the spec. It's a perfect match to the small and lightweight Sony APS-C cameras, and it'll just be a perfect walk around everyday carry type of lens. Of course, as you saw in this video, the trade-offs are evident and it's not a perfect lens by any means, but it's definitely more than enough to get you started with photography and help you get out there and take better photos. So if it came with your camera and you already have it, I wouldn't be so quick to dismiss it. And if you're trying to buy one, I would definitely look on the used market where they're a bargain at around a hundred bucks. All right, so let me know what you guys think. Is this kit lens actually trash and I'm just giving it way too much credit? Or is it worth a place in your camera bag? Let me know. And for those who have used the Sony APS-C system for a while, what are your experiences with this lens? And what would you recommend instead of it? I would love to get this kind of discussion going on in the comments because a lot of people who are coming to watch these videos are still new to photography and they just wanna see what other people are shooting with and how they can improve their own photography. So if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. And if you wanna see more like this and wanna support my channel, please subscribe and I would really appreciate it. As usual, thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace.